Arthur Duncan, it's your turn to chat with our audience. A couple of us native Californians decided to team up on this next number. Bob Schmale, a tremendous pianist from Oakland, California, and I'm from Pasadena. So here's where Northern California and Southern California really get together. Bob, why don't you start it off and I'll join you somewhere around Fresno. the gentleman who is really tops in taps, Arthur Duncan, dancing to a timely tune, Rose Room. Arthur will be joined by Bob Smale on piano, Richard Malouf on bass, and Neil Avang on guitar. Thank you. With an Irish tenor like Joe Feeney and the theme of our show, Flower Songs, <laughs> the choice is pretty obvious. And it looks as though the boss is going to be. And Bob, a wonderful song and a fine rendition. Arthur Duncan enjoys traveling around the country and meeting people. That's why Arthur likes our summer tours. He's crazy about the good old summertime. And that's a cue, Arthur.
was my buddy Arthur in 1968. And if you saw our PBS tribute special, From the Heart, you know he is dancing just as great as ever. We've been good friends for a long, long time. Art came on the show in July of 1964, and a lot of people don't know this, but with his hiring, the Welk Show became the first weekly variety show to have an integrated cast. Just one more example of Mr. Welk's leading the way. It was the most natural thing in the world for all of us on the show, and he was a part of our family from day one. In those days, it was a courageous thing for the Welk Show to do, and I'm very proud to have worked for the people who made that important decision. Now, even though Art and Bobby Burgess are great dancers, my all-time favorite waltz expert was the one and only Mr. Welk. Watch some of Arthur Duncan's fancy footwork. Arthur will be dancing to a number made famous by the, the great Benny Goodman band, Stomping at the Savoy. <laughs> should recall members of Vaudeville, the talented team of Delo and Duncan. You see, you got the time coming, don't you, Arthur? Delo and Duncan. I tell you every street, a boulevard in old New York. Every street, a highway of your dreams. you meet on Mulberry Street. Have you ever been there? I tell you, every street's a boulevard in old New York. So keep smiling and you'll never wear a crown. Just remember there's the east side, hey! the west side, the uptown and down. That's Jealousy can eat your life. Here you go, watch it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it.
nice. Oh, the girls were really bright this evening. This kind of a show is a natural for our own song and dance man, Arthur Duncan. Arthur, this evening, we're going to let you sing. Well, it's your show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to pay tribute to a man who gave us some real highlights in our 200 years of American music. I would like to salute Bill Bojangles Robinson. <laughs> That crazy thing again I've got to do that lazy swing again Hi-ho, I do with a new lowdown And once you hit the haunting strain to it I'd like to bet you'll go insane to it Hi-ho, I do with a new lowdown It's a sin to take the money. Next, a touch of Germany with Arthur Duncan. No, Art's not going to do a German waltz, but the song was written by the famous German band leader Bert Kempfert. Art, danke schön.
Thank you so much for joining us on our Caribbean cruise. Our special guest has entertained audiences all over the world, and Lawrence Welk said he was keeping the art of tap dancing alive. We couldn't agree more. Please welcome Arthur Duncan. Arthur, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. It's good to be here. This was a cruise show. Did you ever entertain on the ships? Yes, I did. Uh, for a period of time, I guess for a two-year period, I uh, entertained on the cruise ships. Solid Traveled many, many places and some great experiences. Now, I understand originally tap dancing wasn't your idea. You were sort of drafted <laughs> to this. Exactly. I, <laughs> I got to tell you this. I was in junior high school and uh, two fellows danced, so there was to be a a school program and they needed a third well I didn't know how to dance didn't know much more than to run to walk or you know with your feet they said well if you can walk you can dance so I resisted but they won out and I learned to tap dance through the other members of the, of, of the trio and I kind of liked it so I started taking tap dance lessons now you're from a big family oh yeah oh very big. How many children? Thirteen. Thirteen children? Eight boys and five girls in the family. Oh, my gosh. Did anyone else go into show business? I was the only one. They said one is enough in the family. <laughs> 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 we couldn't stand two. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So you must have had great teachers. I did. I, I, I must tell you, I had great, great teachers. And they were all rhythm-type dancers. And... Uh, it gave me a good foundation. The first one was Jimmy Muley, and uh, the next one was Willie Covan, and the third and last at that time was uh, Nick Castle. Oh, so you developed a strong technique. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they really stressed uh, good, hear the beat, dance around the beat, but maintain that beat in your mind. I think everyone knows the name Nick Castle. Yes. Now, you had some pretty good mentors. In addition to Nick Castle, I understand Henry Mancini? Yes, well, uh, uh, Nick kind of took me over, and Nick had worked with uh, Henry Mancini on Orchestra Wives, so he asked Henry and Mancini to step in and kind of coach me and whatnot in the vocal department, and, uh, of course, ended up uh, Nick and uh, Henry were co-managers of me at the time. And uh, so I had a, some pretty darn good uh, training. So you had good friendship there as well? Yes, yes. How exciting. So Henry Mancini must have done some of your arrangements too. He certainly did, and I use some of them today. In fact, I used the same formula that Nick Castle uh, put together in uh, doing a, a nightclub act or an act that you presented on uh, on stage or, or in arenas and whatnot. But the formula works, so I... I stick to it. I, I've changed the numbers, but I've taken something out, but added something more current, perhaps. Now, you fitted. truly are an international star. You've traveled all over the world. Well, I've, yes, I, I've been lucky enough to travel to many, many countries. First of all, I went to Australia, and I appeared there. Um, the first time I went, uh, well, I've, I went several times, and the first time I went, I, I worked with uh, Billy Eckstein, then I went back and I worked with Johnny Mathis and, and uh, uh, Jimmy Rogers. In fact, I went over the second time with Jimmy Rogers and they asked me to stay on at the television station. So I worked television over there and did theaters throughout Australia. You were offered your own show at one point, weren't you? Yes, I was. And uh, at, uh, I was quite young then and, and uh, I thought it would have been just too big a task for me at that time, not having the experience to handle a show of that nature, a musical show which was probably based around the Johnny Carson type mm. of show, and it, a lot of responsibility would have fallen on me, so I said, well, this is more than I can handle. So I passed on it, and, and uh, I was working pretty regularly at the time, so I, I didn't lose much. <laughs> so you met Ken Delo in Australia, In Australia, you? yes. What ended up taking you to the Welk Show? I came back to, to the States in uh, the end of 1963. And uh, I knew Sam Lutz, and I knew he had managed uh, uh, Lawrence Welk. So I went to him and I said, gee, I'd love to do a, 
a show I've been the, the Lawrence Welk show I've been out of the country for you know quite some time and I, I want to get back into you no know, show business here so he said well Arthur it's not that type of show but let me think about it and I'll talk to Lawrence so about three or four months later he calls me and said Lawrence wanted to meet me so uh, set up uh, a meeting and uh, it was at the Palladium at the little storefront there that they used to rehearse in and I went out and uh, had an audition for him and I didn't hear anything for another three or four months and finally Sam Lutz called me and he says Lawrence wants to use you on uh, on one of the shows as a guest so I went on that and, that and then three or four months passed <laughs> and, and then I did another show and I they asked if I would go to uh, Lake Tahoe with them, and I did. And the last night of the show, Lawrence calls me back on the stage, and he says, Arthur, he says, the people seem to like you, so we would like to make you a permanent member of the Lawrence Welk musical family. Oh. And that's how he hired Was me. that a thrill? It certainly was. But great exposure with the Lawrence Welk show. Well, since we stopped taping weekly shows, you've gone on to do a million other things. My well, one and only? Uh, yes, I was quite lucky with Tommy Toon, and uh, gosh, I did uh, a film called Tap with uh, Gregory Hines and Sammy Davis. And, uh, and that I, kind of completed the circle with Nick Castle, didn't it? Yes, yes, because uh, Nick Castle's son wrote uh, Tap in honor of his father, and I was so pleased to, to uh, you know, be in that because Nick was a great man and he did so much for in motion pictures in the area. He was one of the great, great choreographers of motion pictures, like films like Royal Wedding, Summer Stock, Biggies. And he helped so many people along the way. Now, you've been getting a lot of awards lately. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah, Living uh, legend? Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> that right here in o Oklahoma City. Uh, at the uh, Oklahoma City University and I received the Living Legend Award from them and I must say it was a, a, a great, great honor and I was never so impressed with the quality of the dancers and singers and their music and dance department that they have at the university. It's first class. If you come down to the river Arthur Duncan is your artistic father. He is a creator of what you are learning and a promoter of what you will do with the rest of your life. Well, you're offering clinics around the country right now, too, so that you're passing your knowledge on to the next generation of tappers. Well, I'm very pleased with that. You know, you, you, you got to spread it around and uh, there's some new dancers coming up that are just incredible but I I've been very fortunate to do the Los Angeles tap festival when the first one and I've been to New York for the to receive an award called the Flowboard Award which is given to uh, 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 people who are involved in choreography performing or or directing in in show business and that sort of opened the door to to these other things that have been happening for me. Not to mention a three-page spread in Dance Magazine. Well, I was, I was overwhelmed with that. <laughs> and I, I take it everywhere I go. <laughs> Arthur, you are keeping tap dancing alive. And we are so honored that you're part of this musical family. Well, I, am, I must tell you, it's, it's my pleasure and an honor to be associated with so many wonderful people in the Lawrence Welk fam musical family. Thank you so much for also being part of this wonderful family of public television. And now, until we meet again, as Lawrence always said, keep a song in your heart. <laughs>